So why not? Let's bring it back old school, right? We'll jump right into it. So we'll check out the Shelly Flood sensor. Definitely wanted to put some of these in since we did have some close mishaps per se with some water in the house recently. And I have been looking at a few different flood sensors and the Shelly Flood was one of them. Now, before we jump into that, we are gonna look at, in a later video, a Tuya Flood that is a little different setup than the Shelly Flood. And we'll potentially see about putting Tasmodo or ESP Home possibly on this one, because of course this one will be stuck in the cloud and we can't have that. Luckily with the Shelly, that doesn't become an issue because it does support MQTT straight out of the box. And of course, there are some other ways to implement this into Home Assistant and various other systems as well. So one thing really cool about the Shelly group, they do do a lot of support on their Facebook group along with Demitar and a few, probably a few other staff. And they're very helpful out on the Facebook group, which is not the norm, which letting customers get that close to the company, but definitely a cool thing. So there's pretty much nothing else to this. And one thing you don't want to forget, which of course I did, is don't forget your batteries because these don't come with batteries. Probably due to shipping and everything, shipping batteries and lithium batteries becomes an issue. The initial to get it apart was kind of hard at first, but it did come apart. It does look like it tries to spin. They do have some little prongs right here. It looks like you're supposed to do a little twist action, but mine was kind of stuck. I don't know with some type of sealant or whatever it might be. So really no frills to it. There of course is the ESP8266 and it looks like they do incorporate a type of pin header, but I did not see in the documentation the actual pin out of which pin was what. And probably I would not be flashing this with a open firmware. I know it's probably shocking to some of you, but it is just a water sensor that it sleeps most of the time. And really we just want it to make sure it works all the time without anything crashing or having any other issues. And there's nothing really we're gonna add with rules or anything like this. So it's kind of one of those KISS principle things. And if you don't know what that is, jump over to Google right quick. It's a good term to learn. So this is the speaker, I believe, and there is a button and there is a temperature sensor on this guy as well. So once you take the screw out, if you want to take it out and look at it, you can see there, don't worry, you probably don't need to do this. I'll save you some time. There's nothing on the back to really look at. And just some real simple design they have here, just some little pogo pins that are soldered onto the bottom for the water sensor. Pretty simple. The only thing I probably say you may want to look out for is probably due to the Wi-Fi signal on these. Um, it is up off of the floor a little bit because of the pogo pin, so that may help out. But maybe that would have been a little bit better to have a better Wi-Fi antenna in these things to, because some of these will be down in cabinets and whatnot. But we'll see how it works out in our home. Probably not too bad because we have some good coverage with those ubiquity access points. So I'm going to put this back together and then we'll get it paired up in the app and set up. So I will say the one thing I really don't like about the Shelly products is the app. I know it looks like they've spent a lot of time on the app, but it make it look pretty or whatever. But I think the whole functionality of the app, I find it hard to use. And I had some issues at various times trying to get stuff paired. So we got the battery in, got it blinking. I don't know how I ended up with two rooms. I don't know how to edit the room. I'll be honest with you, my DD kicked in on for doing the rooms, but we're not going to be using the app. We're going to be using um, the MQTT for this. So we're just going to use it to add it and update the firmware. So we'll add device. We'll search for new device. Of course, it sees it. No problem. Choose the Wi-Fi network. So we use our Shelly net, which we set up for this. Put in our password. We won't do save, we'll just do it next. We'll pick the flood, click to select, 
and we'll say select all and include devices and see what happens. I guess it's saying to use it with Shelly. We'll hit connect and maybe the stars will be aligned this time and we will get it added. Well, fingers crossed. Oh, it added. If you do have an issue like I had, there is an access point that is sent out by most Shelly devices when it's in pairing mode. And you can just connect to that access point with your phone, put in your Wi-Fi information, hit save, and it'll come right up. It's a really cool way to pair things up when you have issues like I do. We'll put flood back for the back bathroom. And hurry up and wait. We're going to connect to the cloud. Cannot complete operation. See, this is some of the issues I have. We'll try again. Cannot complete. Connection lost. I guess because it's the battery device. So let's push the button. Maybe you get to wake back up. So, of course, we don't have our flood in any of our main rooms. But it is solid. So we're going to check our router and look for an IP address to this guy. Let's give it a shot because I did not see it on the Wi-Fi for some reason before it goes to sleep. Save device. All right. Don't be slow like me. All right. Pretty simple. Of course, it's not being connected to the cloud. Why not? I thought it said it was connected to the cloud. Oh, okay. There it goes. Let's go ahead and hit update firmware while we are here. So if we can change some of the settings here while we're waiting. We want to put it in Fahrenheit. All right, maybe push the button to wake this thing back up. I think that has to deal with some of the, this device being a battery based device. It keeps going to sleep during the setup. So you gotta pay attention to the LED. And, but hey, we're doing this real. This is the issues that I'm, Finding out, just messing with this, and that others will run into possibly as well. It did change our temperature. It was running kind of high compared to what's in the room. We got the battery. It's going to do a little chart here. Well, this is some of the issues I have, of course, if you've been a member of the YouTube channel, of our stuff being in the cloud. This just doesn't work reliably for me. I prefer to keep things local control. And luckily, this firmware that comes stock in here has MQTT built straight into the firmware and just put in your information, which we're going to get to. So let's go ahead and make sure that this is on the right firmware. Yes, it has the right firmware. And at this point, you can go in and you'll need to jump into the actual IP address, which you can find here on the settings and you can browse on over to that IP address and we can take it out of the cloud and put it onto our own MQTT broker all without having to flash it or do any kind of special firmware settings. So yay for Shelly for doing that. I know I kind of give them crap for their app, which that's going to be me and cause I just say it like it is, but Hey, good job on them building an MQTT straight into the stock firmware. So to configure any additional settings on the Shelly flood sensor, such as MQTT and many other things, it does come with a built-in web interface. But again, because it is a battery device, we need to wake it up before we can actually browse to that internet IP address. So we'll go ahead and wake ours up. And one thing I do like to do is I do like to do a ping window to that IP address. And that way I know exactly when it's woken up. And then depending on your connection and whatnot with DHCP, it may take a little bit, but it will get on your Wi-Fi. And that's as soon as it starts pinging, we'll refresh the page in our browser. And there we are. We have it pinging. We'll go ahead and refresh the page because it will want to go back to sleep. So jump on around. You can see down in the settings, you can go change and do the various firmware updates. You can go ahead and reboot the device, factory reset, etc. Some of the same stuff you could do in the app. Then down on the internet security, that's where we want to be, is under advanced developer settings, we're actually going to put our MQTT username, password, and server. 
And I like to use that retain. That way you'll still get that same sensor setting of say showing the battery, showing the, uh, whether it's no flood or flood, et cetera, even if you reboot your home assistant or whatever type of home automation system you're using. And do take note, it, if you enable MQTT for local control, it will disable the actions via cloud. But I did notice we still got notifications from the flood whenever we temporarily put water on it or when we connected the pins and still got our notifications on our phone, which is a good thing. But if you don't want the cloud, you can disable the cloud. Now, one thing that will make it a lot faster to actually connect to the Wi-Fi is if you go into internet security and go into your Wi-Fi mode client and go ahead and set a static IP address and make sure it's not an address, of course, that's used by anything else. So probably set it outside of your DHCP pool or just go ahead and give it a reserved address on your router and then set this static IP and that way you know nothing else will take it. And that will make this connection happen much, much faster whenever it comes online to report a flood or whatever it might be, which will also conserve battery. So we've connected ours to MQTT. And I'll show you real quick what it looks like in MQTT Explorer. And real simple stuff inside of MQTT Explorer. So you can integrate it into your home automation system, such as Node-RED or Home Assistant, whatever it might be. There's just a few sensors it does drop in. There's the temperature, there's the flood, whether it's a true or a false, along with the battery. And then you have the online state, whether it's awake or sleeping to conserve battery. So for the Home Assistant users, yeah, there is a little bit of YAML. There is a custom component for the Shelleys, but I can just say we pretty much struck out on that. And I just didn't have any luck trying to get a lot of my Shelly devices in. It just wouldn't populate some of the stuff in the custom component. And so we were gonna use them in MQTT anyway, since so we just abandoned it and went straight to MQTT since it just works. So it's real simple and I will leave all these configurations in the description of the video down below. So you can just simply copy and paste them and you just simply would change your unique Mac ID for your topic that you found using QTT Explorer, MQTT FX or whatever it might be that you found the exact topic. So there's just two sensors. We did put in the temperature and we did put in the battery percent. That way you could drive some notifications and monitor the battery. And then as well, there's the very important one. There's the binary sensor. We set it as device class moisture. Again, it's true or false. And take note, once you do set off the Shelly, you will need to reset it using the button inside from what we found to get it back to that no flood state. So of course, we're not gonna use water around electronics and stuff, even though these are designed for it. We just have too much on the desk and we're gonna make a mess. Well we can actually just connect the two pins and we're gonna use our little handy dandy bottle opener here. So there we go, you can see it is going off and the speaker is pretty loud for being the unit its size itself. And then we'll look for the notification on our phone and or home assistant or however you've set that one up. So then we get our beep from our phone too. So now it's really driving you nuts. We'll cut that one off and jump on over to home assistant and pretty simple, you can see it shows wet, which of course you could use that to drive any voice notifications or whatever you might want to do in your home. And I hope you enjoyed the little quick look at the Shelly flood sensor. Definitely going to help us monitor some of the water issues that we may have in the future. Hopefully we did fix those, but well, time will tell. So definitely check the description down below. Shelly's doing all kinds of sales from various times and whether you find them on their store or their EU store or the US store, Amazon, whatever it is, just check out and kind of compare prices and see what's the best for you based on where you're located. So I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers out there. Definitely helps bring new projects and new content to the channel each week. And you know the drill. Now you're a subscriber, smash that button down there along with that bell icon and catch us in our next video and live stream. Hey, and don't forget, check us out in Discord too. And y'all take care. So one easy way to test it is not by throwing it.